Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hello, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of VMworld 2019. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Dave, 10 years covering theCUBE. We were at Moscone in 2010. Boy, a lot's changed, but it's still the platform that Paul Moritz laid out with the stuff filling in 10 years later. You're joking, you called it software mainframe and then uh, Robin came in and said, you can't call it mainframe. And we have <laughs> leaders from VMware's largest business unit, the cloud platform business unit, Kit Colbert to CTO and Chris Prasad's SVP and general manager. Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Yeah, thanks time. for having us. Yeah. So, so Worlds, you. your business unit is smoking hot, it's very popular, like uh, you're running around doing meetings, cloud platform is the software model that's 10 years later, actually happening at scale. Yep. Congratulations, what's the, what's the big news? What's the big uh, conversation for you guys? Yeah, the biggest news this week is the announcement of Project Pacific. And um, it's about taking the platform which has um, hundreds of thousands of customers on it and bringing together Kubernetes which is now very popular with the developers and that platform together so that operators on the one hand can just deal with the platform they love, and the developers can deal with the uh, Kubernetes uh, layer that they love. It's interesting to watch because you know the whole end user computing stack that was laid out 10 years ago mm -hmm. is actually happening now. It's a, it's a SaaS, it's a SaaS business models. We all see the, what's yeah. happened with Amazon, the success of cloud. But it's interesting to see Kubernetes, which we've been following since before it started, OpenStack days. You saw that emerge, and everyone kind of saw that, and it really became a nice uh, layer yeah. that the industry just Create as a yep. de facto, yep. and you guys are actually driving that more forward, so congratulations yeah. on that. Yep. But sitting it natively in vSphere is interesting because you guys have to spend a ton of time, yep. this is a core product for you guys. Yep. So you're bringing something native into vSphere. Yep. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of debates internally on how to do that. Oh yeah. Kit, what's the, what, what is the relevance for? Because you guys have a lot yep. of efficiencies in vSphere, but bringing in Kubernetes is going to give you some new things. What's yeah. the, so the thinking is really, you know, as Chris was mentioning, how do we take this proven platform and move it forward? Uh, customers have um, you know, moved millions of workloads on top of vSphere, operating them in production with production grade capabilities. And so they've been able to be very successful in that. And so the question is, how do we help them move forward into Kubernetes? You know, as you mentioned, Kubernetes is still fairly young. The ecosystem around it is still somewhat immature, still, still growing, right? And it's a very you know, different environment than what folks are used to who use vSphere. And so there's a big challenge that customers have around managing multiple environments, all the training that's different, all the tools that are different. So if we can actually take their investments they've already made into vSphere, leverage and extend those into the Kubernetes world, that's really powerful. And it'll help our customers take all these millions of workloads and move them forward. It's interesting because we were always speculating about VMware. I was talking to Jerry Chen when he was on yesterday. Um, he's been at VMware since early days, as you know. Yep. But looking at VMware, when they went to their, you guys went back to your core, when v, vCloud Air kind of went its way and then the deal with Amazon, since the stock price has been going great, so great shareholder, <laughs> stakeholder value there, but you got clarity around what cloud was. Mm -hmm. And as you look at the operator target audience, you guys have the operators. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the dev and ops is critical. So you guys have been operating a lot of workloads, and I think this is fascinating. So the role of containers is super relevant because you got VMs and containers. So yeah. again, the debate continues. Well, I think containers, well, VMware, but, and, and it's an interesting conversation because Kubernetes is orchestrating all that. Yes. Yeah. Now. Well, the snarky treat, tweet the other day, and you guys feel free to comment, was, uh, oh, I thought we start, you know, launched Pivotal so we didn't have to run containers on virtual machines. Yeah. Now, we know that people run yeah. containers on bare metal, they run containers in virtual yeah. machines, but... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a debate that, that we hear pop up and you know, the, the, the snarky Twitter feeds and so forth. When we talk to customers about it, you know, this whole VM versus container debate I think really misses the point because it's not really about that. What it's about is how do I actually operate these workloads in production, right? There's kind of this, this three pillars as we talk about, build, run, manage. Customers want to accelerate that. They want to do that with enterprise grade capabilities, with security. And so that's where it really gets challenging. And I think you know, we've built this amazing ecosystem around vSphere to achieve that. And so that's really what we're taking forward here. And yes, the fact that we're using virtualization under the covers, that's an implementation detail almost. Yeah. What's more valuable is all the stuff above that, the manageability, the operational capabilities. That's the real power. It seems to me too the business impact because okay, people are going to go to the cloud and they're going to build cloud native apps, but you've got all these incumbent companies that mm -hmm. are trying not to get disrupted, they're trying to find new opportunities, they're playing offense and defense at the same time. 
They need tooling to be able to do that. They don't want to take their ERP app and stick it in the <laughs> cloud, right? They want to modernize it. Yep. And, and you know, you're not going to build that overnight in the cloud anyway, so they need help. Mm -hmm. But that's the, the key move that we made here. If you, if you think about it, customers don't have Kubernetes experts, right, yeah. they, <laughs> today. And most of them, in their journey to the modern apps, they are saying, hey, we need to set up two stacks at least. We have our VMware stack that we love, and now Kubernetes our developers love, so we have to stand that up. And they don't have any in-house experts to do that, right? And with this one move, we have actually collapsed it back to one stack. Yeah, I think yep, it's a brilliant right? move, actually. It's, it's brilliant because the dev ops ethos is proven. Everyone yep. wants to be there, yep. right? And the question is, who's leading and who's lagging? So yep. ops has traditionally lagged, if you look at it from a exactly. developer yep. standpoint. Exactly. You guys have not been lagging on the operator side. We certainly have tons of VMs. This virtualization has been standardized. So yep. this, it's, it's unifying yeah. the yes. two worlds together. Exactly. And it really, as we've been calling it, Cloud 2.0, because if you look at what hybrid really is, mm -hmm. it's Cloud 2.0. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cloud 1.0 was DevOps, storage and compute. Yep. Amazon, if you're born in the cloud, we, we're, we have no IT department, yeah. 50 plus people. <laughs> Why would we ever, and developers yeah. are the exactly. operators. Right. Yeah. So we're yep. small. Yep. But Enterprise scale, it's yep. not yep. that easy. So I'd love to get your thoughts on how you guys would frame the cloud 2.0. Yeah. Vis-a-vis, if cloud 1.0 is storage and compute and Amazon like scale, mm -hmm. what is cloud 2.0 to you? Yeah, well I think, so let's talk about the cloud journey because I think that's, that's what you're getting at here. <clears throat> so here's how I discuss it with customers. Uh, you are where you are today. You have your existing apps, a lot of them are monolithic, you're slow to update, um, you know, so forth, right? And then you have sort of the cloud native nirvana over here where like everything's re-architected, it's microservices. Cool and shiny. Yeah, it's got all those <laughs> containers off. I have a lot to But it doesn't run my business. Well, yeah. <laughs> Not but, yet. But, well, this is where you want to get to, right? And I think the challenge, and the challenge is it's a huge amount of effort to get there, right? All the training we're talking about, all the tooling, and, the, and all the changes there. And people tend to look at this as a very binary thing, right? That you're either here, where you are, or you're in the cloud native nirvana. People don't often talk about what's in the middle and that the fact that it's a spectrum. And I think what we see at VMware is like, let's meet customers where they are. Uh, you know, I think one of the big realizations we had is not everyone needs to get every single application on this far side over here. Some apps, your ERP system, whatever, you know, it's, it's fine to get them a little bit of the way there. And so one of the things um, that we saw with VMware Cloud and AWS, for example, was that people, uh, there was a pent up demand to move to the public cloud. But it was challenging because to go from a vSphere environment on-prem to an AWS native environment, you have to change a bunch of things, the tooling changes, like the environment's a little bit different. But with the VMware Cloud and AWS, there's no modifications at all, you just literally vMotion it. And so people are vMotioning things like insanely fast. Now, without modifying the app, you can't get, you know, it's not like the app's suddenly better scalable, but you get other cloud benefits. You get things like, oh, my infrastructure is dynamic, I can add hosts dynamically, I only pay for what I need, I can consume this as a service. And so we help moving we have to move their, their workloads a little bit in that middle of the spectrum there. And I think what we're doing with Project Pacific and Kubernetes is the same thing. They can start taking advantage of these great Kubernetes capabilities for their existing apps without modification. So again, kind of moving them further in that middle spectrum. And then, yeah. you know, for the apps that really make a difference to their business, we can, they can put in the extra effort to get all the way over there. And we saw that some of the evidence of some challenges of that shiny new trend within the Hadoop ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Big data, object store, I mean, who doesn't yep. love that concept, right? Yeah. Uh, MapReduce, but what happened was is that the infrastructure costs and the personnel, human capital costs were so massive that, and then the cloud, cloud came yep. along and said, well, I'll just go well, to the cloud. Well, there's also right? the other point you know. about just, just, just the bespoke tooling that is yeah, you pointing out, the, the, the confusion. Yeah, it's about people process technology, right, and the disruptions we create, you know, to that, and the investments that it takes to transition over. And, and then you had, a skill, and you had a skills gap in terms yep. of what people have to do, but so yep. that brings us back to, so how do you address that problem? Because the, most of the audience out here yep. are not developers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now so, Pivotal has the developer's connection, so. This is one of the really cool things about Pacific, that what we've done with Pacific, when you look at it from an IT operations point of view, that person sees vSphere. Mm -hmm. It's a tool they already know and use, understand it well. When a developer looks at it, they see Kubernetes. And so there's these two different viewpoints. It's kind of like you know, the blind men around the elephant, <laughs> but, um, but the thing is it's actually you know, a singular thing in the back end, right? Even though they have these two different views. And so, the cool thing about it is we can actually bring IT ops and developers together 
that they can use their own language, tools, process, but there's a common thing that they're talking about and they have common visibility into that. And that's super, super powerful. And when you look at it, um, all the stuff that's happening on the Kubernetes side is fully visible on the vSphere side. So all these tools that already work against vSphere suddenly light up and support Kubernetes automatically. So again, without any work, we suddenly get so much more benefit. And the category busters that are going on too, it's, you're changing, you're taking software approach that you guys know, mm -hmm. and you're taking it to the software developer world. Mm -hmm. It's kind of changing the game. One of the things I want, Chris, I want to get your thoughts on cloud 2.0 because you know, if compute and storage was cloud 1.0, mm -hmm. we're seeing networking and security and data becoming critical ingredients that are problem statement areas people are working on, certainly networking, you guys yeah. are in that. So as cloud 2.0 is going to take into the fact that that messy middle between, you know, I'm on here and then I want the Nirvana, yeah. it's always, the origination story and the outcomes end story is always great, but they, the messy, messy middle, as you were pointing out, is hard. So how do you guys And if you, if you look, at, look at the moves that we made in the market, do you know about the Bitfusion acquisition that we made? Right, which uh, happened like a month ago. Yep. And it was about preparing the platform uh, for AI and ML workloads. So really what we are trying to do is really make sure that the vSphere platform is uh, ready for the modern applications, right? Uh, AI, ML on one side, Kubernetes applications, um, you know, service-oriented applications, all of them can land on the same platform. And more and more, whether it's AI, ML, or other applications, yeah. they are being uh, written on top of Kubernetes. That's right? infrastructure as code. Yeah, yep. infrastructure as well, code, right? Uh, so enabling Kubernetes will help us land all the modern applications on top of the same platform that our customers are used to. So it's a huge kind of a inflection point in the industry from my standpoint. Well, to your earlier That's point, point, every CIO you talk to says, I want to get from point A to point B and I don't want to spend a billion dollars to get yeah. there. I don't want to have to hire some systems integrator and outsource to get yeah. me there. Show me how I get yeah. there without you know, well, disrupting my it's, business. It's how do we meet the customers where they're at, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, what well, the problem with this, the kind of uh, either or model, you're either here or you're there, is that there's a huge opportunity cost. And again, a lot of people just need a little bit of goodness. They don't need the full crazy Nirvana goodness, yeah. right? And so we enable them to get that very easily um, in an automated way, right? If you have to spend any time refactoring or thinking through this app, that takes months or even a year or more. And so, you know, the, the, the speed that we can unleash here, the velocity for these customers is, is critical. Well, the benefit of that Nirvana is always taken out of context because people look at the outcome over, over yeah. iterations and saying, well, I want to be there. But it all starts on a very variable basis. In shadow IT, we used to call it, but yep. you yep. can go in the cloud and do something really small and simple. Yep. And then, and wow, this is much more efficient. I like this stack or this approach. That's ultimately how it gets there. So I got to get, I got to get that, that point of, for infrastructure as code because this is what you're enabling in vSphere from what I see. I want to get your exactly. guys' reaction to this because the world used to be, and I asked Gelsinger this years ago and he kind of validated it, but because he's old school Intel, infrastructure dictated to the applications what it could do based on what it could do. Right. Yep. Now it's flipped upside down yep. with cloud platform because yes. platform in, implies enabling something. Yes. Yep. Enabling platform, whatever you want to call it. The apps are dictating to the infrastructure, I need this. That's infrastructure as code. Yep. That's kind of what you're saying. Is that yeah, I mean, look, hmm. Kubernetes brought a paradigm which said, hey, I can declare what I want, right? And then uh, the system will take care of it and maintain that state, right? Desired state execution is what it brought to the table. Mm -hmm. And the container-based apps um, have already been working that way. What this uh, announcement does with Project Pacific is that the VM applications that our customers built in the past, they are going to be able to take advantage of the same pattern, mm -hmm. which is yeah. the, the infrastructure as code, declarative, yeah. and desired state execution. That, that's going to happen even for the old workloads that our customers are using. And they're going to still do VMs. I mean, they're yeah, scaled, they're going to have thousands absolutely. of VMs are going exactly. away. But it'll operate the same paradigm. I mean, Paul yeah. Morris doesn't get enough credit for the, the comment he made in 2010, he called it the hardened top. Do you really care what's underneath if it's working yeah. effectively? Well, I right? mean, I think you know, the reality today is that even though um, you know, containers that get, all, get a lot of coverage and attention, most workloads are being provisioned, new workloads even, are being provisioned in VMs, right? If you look at AWS, the public clouds, yep. I mean, it's the EC2 or uh, you know, Google Compute Engine. Those services, those VMs are the ones that are getting heavily used. And so the way we look at it is we want to support everything. 
And it's just, we want to give customers a bunch of tools in their toolbox, and let's put, and use the right tool for the right job, right? That's really the mentality. That's really Cloud 2.0. Chris, I want to get your, I want to nail you down on the definition of a Cloud 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your version of Cloud 2.0? <laughs> Come on. We keep dodging your answer. Yeah, I'll get it out of Come on. No, I, I think Look, we touched on all aspects of it. One is the infrastructure as code, allowing the, the, the consumer of the cloud to be able to dictate the environment in which the applications will operate, mm -hmm. right? And the, the consumer is defining it, or the developer is defining it in this case. That to me is the, the biggest shift that we have gone through in the 2.0 yeah. era, and we are just making our platform come to life to support that. Now, listen, we're taking a cube survey and we're going to put it all together and yep. you know, we want the community to define it, not us. Yep. Yep. Um, what is it, explain to the audience what it means to be a project and how does a project get into <laughs> an offering? You can describe yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> so <laughs> Project Pacific, is vSphere, right? I mean, this is a massive rethinking, re-architecture of vSphere. Like, pretty much every major subsystem component within vSphere has been updated with, with, with this effort. Um, what we're doing here is what we've technically announced is actually what we call a technical preview. So it's saying, hey, this is technology we're working on. We think it's really interesting. We want to share it with the public, get the public's feedback, you know, figure out are we on the right direction or not. So we're not making any commitment to releasing it or any timeframes mm -hmm. yet. Um, but so part of that needed a name, right? <laughs> and so, because uh, it is vSphere, but it's a specific thing we're doing with vSphere. So that, that, that's where the project comes from. Right. And I think it also gives it, you know, this thing has been a huge effort internally, right? There's a lot of work that's gone into it. So, you know, it, it has some heft and deserves a, a name mm -hmm. in itself. Right? Yeah, it's DevOps 2.0. You're guys bringing, you're making your infrastructure truly enable program out, programmable yep. for apps, yeah. application I mean, the, tsunami. The one thing I would say is we wouldn't, announce it as a project if it was not coming soon. I mean, we still are in the process of getting feedback, yeah. yep. you know, we'll tune it and whatnot, but it, it's not something that is way out there. It's, yeah. it, it is going to come It's soon. a clear direction. Yes. Yep. It's a statement you're putting investment into, it's coding going yep. on, yep. it's yep. got to course correct, get some feedback, yep. yeah, and exactly. figure it out. I mean, it's pretty obvious. You can go, a lot of pain, or yep. <laughs> easy. Yes, it's, the easy. It's an easy button for Kubernetes. Yeah, yeah the, it, is. Well, it is. Easy, easy, easy on-ramp to yeah. the future. Kind yep. of. Yeah, I think it's a great move. Congratulations, we're obviously Thank big you. fans of Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. um, saw the guys last night uh, having a little meeting to Marriott thinking up the next battle plans for uh, game plan for you guys, so. Yeah, yeah. We, got a, we got a lot, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We got a lot of really, really cool stuff we're doing. Well, we're going to we'll be following the cloud, cloud platform, your progress, certainly we're covering cloud 2.0, looking at these new categories that are emerging. Again, mm -hmm. the end state is DevOps, yep. programmability yep. for yep. applications. The Cube coverage, 10th year, covering VMworld. We're in the lobby of Moscone in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching.